Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the first year of student talks of 2024. I hope that the year has started nicely for you. And of course, we are going to continue with our Euro student talks webinar series this year as well. Today, we are going to talk about uh, Georgia and namely the students employment experience and their financial condition in Georgia. And it's an exclusive webinar in that sense that uh, we have the chance to see the freshest results from Eurostudent uh, current, the eighth round. So you're really lucky to be here. Uh, actually, the national report of Georgia is also already available, both in Georgian and in English, and it's available on Eurostudent webpage. And I can send the link to the chat as well so that you can already check it out. Um, our speaker today is Anna Papiashvili. Uh, Anna has a master's, master's degree in sociology and currently she is a PhD student of sociology at Ivana Yavakishvili Tbilisi State University in Georgia. She is a researcher analyst in a research organization called Institute of Social Studies and Analysis. Additionally, Anna is an invited lecturer at Ivana Yavakishvili Tbilisi State University and also at Georgian Institute of Public Affairs. She is an author and co-author of several publications and research papers and articles commissioned by World Health Organization, UNICEF, UNFPA and Social Justice Center. Additionally, Anna has published several articles in the Student Scientific Journal of the Faculty of Social and Political Studies, a sciences of, the, of Tbilisi State University. Uh, her current research uh, project is about discussing and analyzing the normative, ethical, and practical ways of implementing academic social responsibility in the Georgian higher education area. Hello, Anna. I'm very happy to have you here as a speaker. Hello, Marlon. Uh, good morning to everybody and good afternoon, everybody as well. Uh, so it's nice uh, to me to be here and it's very nice to enjoy in this meeting and speak about our topic today. Um, so we can start maybe, right? Yeah, I'm done with my introduction and you can start. We are already eager to hear about the results. Okay, thanks a lot. So as uh, Marlene already mentioned, today we are going to speak about the uh, students' uh, employment experience and their financial condition in Georgia. Uh, so our data is depends on the eighth round of uh, Euro student. And uh, uh, at the very beginning, I want to uh, give you some general information about our fieldwork and about our um, general information about the respondents. Uh, so, uh, first of all, the period of our research lasts uh, almost uh, uh, four months. It starts in uh, May and ends in the uh, July. Um, a total of uh, 4,771 students we are interviewed within the frame of this research. And um, I have to mention that we used uh, two different uh, methods of uh, interviewing these students. Uh, one of them was the online format. Uh, like we made the electronic version of the questionnaire and uh, integrate uh, them uh, on online link. And almost uh, 3,000 respondents we are interviewed in this way. And additionally, we uh, use the face-to-face -face format uh, because uh, to say the truth in Georgia, it's not a uh, common practice uh, uh, to conduct these surveys like in an online format because the response rate is somehow lower. Uh, so we decided to... Uh, include the interviewers in this process, uh, but uh, we did not change the format of this, uh, of uh, uh, filling the questionnaire. I mean, uh, the face-to-face -face format included the self-administered questionnaire style because our interviewers like gave the tablets uh, to students and they um, uh, filled out by, by themselves this questionnaire. So uh, there are some uh, general information about the number of respondents by different uh, uh, levels of uh, data uh, analysis. It's by region, by educational level, by the type of higher education institution, uh, by sex, by age, by citizenship of Georgia, and by fields of study. So uh, I, uh, so if you need this information, like uh, 
we can go back to the slides. And now I'm going to speak about the uh, main topic of our uh, meeting. It's about the employment experience of students uh, um, in general uh, within the frame of this uh, study, the share of the students with a paid job during the current uh, lecture period was uh, evaluated and it was revealed that uh, uh, more than half of them uh, are unemployed. Uh, it's like 58%. Uh, uh, so almost a third uh, of students work during the fall semester and more than a tenth work from time to time. Um, and additionally, I want to say that the assessment of uh, general employment situation of students revealed that uh, almost 53% uh, uh, of respondents had no paid job, including the, the paid internship, including the safe uh, self-employment experience during the lecture-free period. Uh, it's during the last uh, one year. So uh, in general, we can say that the employment rate in students is somehow lo low in Georgia because um, they mostly are, are uh, connected with their studies and primary uh, uh, they self uh, perceive themselves as a student. So we can talk about these issues uh, somehow later as well. Uh, so including the weekends, uh, the time spent in uh, paid jobs during the current lecture period equals um, 13 hours. Um, so when we are analyzing these issues uh, by the education level, uh, it's revealed that uh, there are a reliable co connection between these variables. Um, as you can see, the master students have the most experience of working in paid jobs during the semester. It's almost 60% uh, who works continuously uh, or from time to time during the semester. And the majority of students uh, of all other training levels, of all other educational levels, are unemployed. So uh, there are some general persons uh, presented in this presentation, like uh, the bachelor degree, it's 55% uh, in, in Georgian language education program and also teachers training education program is 61% uh, and some medical programs and teachers training integrated bachelor and master's degree programs, it's 78%. Uh, uh, so in general, we can say that um, in general level and in educational level, the employment is somehow the problematic uh, issue for uh, students. Uh, additionally, we analyze this data by the fields of study and by the uh, citizenship of Georgia because uh, we had the, some concerns that maybe there will be a different, uh, um, different results by the fields of study and uh, that, that was relevant as well because um, it, the exception is a business administration program uh, where the almost half of students work throughout the semester, which is the highest rate compared to the other study programs. So the healthcare and the humanities and also uh, the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary fields and program students stand out with the rate of not having the paid jobs during the semester. So uh, such results may be related to the requirements of the labor market or uh, also directly to the specifics of the study programs. Because for example, uh, healthcare students are often employed in uh, various medical facilities, uh, but this employment counts as their practice requir required by their curriculum. So it's not the um, another uh, version of their uh, employment. It's uh, connected with their studies. So maybe uh, they did not uh, count uh, count this experience as uh, having paid jobs because this is the part of their uh, curriculum and part of their uh, study uh, procedures. Uh, so when we are talking about the uh, level of Georgian citizenship, uh, it was determined that 45% uh, of Georgian students uh, during the semester, um, they had the experience of working in a paid jobs. It's uh, during the whole lecture semester, it's almost third of our respondents and from time to time, it's more than the 10 uh, tenths of our respondents. So among the non-citizen residents of Georgia, the indicator is reduced to 
22%. So the share of unemployed uh, respondents during the semester is distributed according to groups uh, as follows. I can identify them like the citizens of Georgia, it's uh, 55%, and uh, non-citizens of Georgia, it's almost 78%. So uh, the students with paid job uh, in the current semester, assess also the extent to which uh, employment-related statements apply to their situations. And there are these statements uh, presented, so we can um, check these uh, persons as well. Uh, so it's revealed that the situation described in each statement applies to the large part of the students. So we combine the points one and two, and there is some information presented, like the statements uh, uh, which is this that I want to cover my living costs. Uh, like almost half of our respondents said that uh, the statement applies to their uh, conditions. Uh, so if we talk about the statement, uh, I want to gain experience in the labor market, it's uh, more than the first statement's uh, percentage and it's uh, equals to uh, 63%. Without my paid job, uh, I could not afford to be a student. It's almost uh, 42%. And students work because uh, they have to support others financially. It's like 42%. And the, um, I think the um, more interesting statement is that if students work so they can afford things uh, they otherwise would not buy, it's 64%. Uh, so we can check this data, this uh, general data in different um, levels, but uh, we uh, presented these different levels uh, by the different statements. So not all the statements are described in all uh, levels of uh, data processing, but there are some examples presented. Like for example, the first statement is that students work to gain some experience on the labor market. So we analyzed that presented this data by the um, Georgian citizenship. So it's uh, revealed that 64% uh, um, of Georgian citizen students work to gain experience on the labor, labor market. So they check that this statement applies to them. So um, uh, on the other side, almost 40% of non-citizens of Georgia state the similar position and express the similar, similar experience. So uh, we think that this um, assessment uh, maybe somehow related to the students' uh, motivations and uh, their goals as well. So it may be assumed that uh, most of the students uh, who are citizens of Georgia will obtain um, paid jobs here in our country, so in Georgia. Therefore, for their uh, development, it's uh, necessary to study and understand the requirements of the labor market and to accumulate some experience in these rurals. Um, on the other hand, if we talk about the um, conditions and situations of non-citizens of Georgia, we might think that uh, the main goal of non-citizen students of Georgia is to um, gain some knowledge and to gain some uh, professional development uh, and not to meet the requirements of the labor market. So we think the difference of uh, um, percentage and uh, results are caused uh, because of uh, this explanation which we have presented. Um, if we go on a different uh, employment-related statements, such as that students work uh, so they can afford things they otherwise would not buy, uh, it's ruled that the uh, paid job is highly necessary for the purchase of various things for Georgian uh, citizen students because 65% um, of students uh, of this group indicate that uh, they can buy things um, they would not afford to otherwise. So we uh, here as well uh, sound the points uh, one and two. So non-citizens of Georgia are less likely to have these needs. Um, they, are, uh, they are just 51% uh, uh, um, who said that this statement applies to their conditions. So it's um, possible to assume uh, that uh, uh, foreign students uh, living in Georgia receive financial support uh, from their families. And we can see uh, this information in, in other slides as well. So they are able uh, to purchase necessary or desirable uh, things uh, 
by their own. Uh, that uh, is the dominant source of income for them. It may not be the paid job. So we are going to say that uh, um, citizens of Georgia uh, have paid jobs to cover their um, tuition fees, to cover their living costs, and to uh, afford some things they otherwise would not buy. But in case of non-citizens of Georgia, um, they are the main source of uh, fi financing. Uh, all of these needs are their family members and uh, the primary group, primary social uh, group. So uh, the study uh, also revealed uh, uh, that almost half of these students are employed by their profession or a related profession. As they indicate that their current job, job is closely related to the content uh, of the study program. Um, however, in general, uh, the fact that the employment by profession is very problematic uh, in Georgia, it's also evidenced by the fact that the uh, third of the respondents is like 31% work in a field uh, different from their study programs. Uh, so they cannot uh, directly apply the knowledge obtained at the university to a paid job. So uh, this situation is very common and very uh, um, uh, important in Georgian case because uh, students could not manage to um, find, uh, mostly they could not manage to find uh, the jobs which are connected to their profession and to their uh, study programs uh, as well. So uh, when we talk about uh, this uh, um, situation and this issue about some, by some different uh, uh, independent variables, uh, we presented the um, results by the fields of study. Uh, so the main part of the students of different uh, fields of study, different study disciplines, emphasize uh, the correspondence and connection between the current study program and the paid job. So different from this uh, dominant position, uh, negative connotation response uh, categories were observed in the case of students of natural sciences. It's like uh, 39%. Also, in case of law, it's uh, almost forty-six uh, percent, and in case of social sciences, it's uh, forty-two, forty-three percent. So, according to the experience of uh, 40, uh, forty-two uh, percent of students, their jobs are not related to the content of the current study program. So, in this case, we combine the um, points points of four and five to describe this data in general and not in the particular uh, points of our scale. So it's uh, um, once again uh, underlines the uh, problem of uh, connection between the current job of students and uh, the study programs and the knowledge gaining from their study programs. Um, so when um, I said that uh, there are somehow um, the situation that students mostly uh, reveal that their self-perception is uh, to be a st students primarily and uh, then to um, self and then to say that they are working. So uh, in this uh, survey, there were two different statements. Uh, the first one was that uh, primarily I'm a student and I'm working alongside my studies and the Second one uh, was that primarily I work and I'm standing alongside my paid job. So these statements, uh, we are essentially related to the students' self-perception of their social status. As it turned out and as it's presented uh, on the slide is 71% uh, of students consider themselves primarily students. More than a quarter agree with the second statement and put a paid job before studies. So if we um, check this data um, by the level of uh, uh, educational level, so by the bachelor program, by master program, and so on, um, analyzed by these training levels, the student self-perception is uh, significantly different because uh, if 84% uh, um, of students of uh, one stage medical program and also the teacher's training integrated bachelor and master program consider that they study uh, primarily and in addition work. 
The same position is recorded among uh, uh, 52 percent of the master's students. And in case of bachelor degree students, uh, 74 of them are also in the category of perceiving themselves uh, primarily as a student. So it should also be noted that uh, compared to master degree students, a small share of bachelor degree students is employed in paid jobs, as we already mentioned the, in the primary slides. And uh, presumably, their main activity is studying. So it's uh, it's this case that they, the majority of master's programs have the paid jobs, and that and maybe that's why uh, like almost half of them identify themselves primarily as the workers or primarily as the students. And in the bachelor's programs a situation, most of them um, don't have the paid jobs during the semester, and maybe that's why they identify themselves primarily as the student and not as the workers. So if we continue uh, to uh, in details this issue, we can um, analyze the data by the fields of the study. Uh, it can be seen that the rate of self-perception as a student is the highest among healthcare students and the lowest among the education students. So um, such results, um, maybe are probably uh, due to the specifics of the study programs, as we already mentioned, but uh, once again, to uh, to analyze this information, the period of study in healthcare um, is long uh, compared to others in Georgia. So moreover, as mentioned about the components of employment in various medical institutions is also considered as an activity of the curriculum. Uh, so the healthcare discipline students um, primarily identify themselves as students and not as the workers, because the part of uh, their uh, working and part of their, uh, to say so, the paid jobs, um, in reality are the, uh, the uh, components of their study program. So when they are working, uh, like during this semester, uh, actually they are studying uh, in the practical way. So maybe that's why these health healthcare students I more identify themselves as a student and not as the um, workers. Uh, so to say so, the, this was the information about the um, paid jobs uh, and about the employment experience of students. And now we, uh, the second part of our presentation is connected to the financial situation uh, of respondents. So in order to evaluate this financial situation of uh, students, the study analyzed uh, from whom and in what form uh, the students receive this financial support. So as you know, the family and uh, or partner, we are defined as uh, supporting sources, and the following uh, we are determined as forms of the support. It was the cash or bank transfers, also it was the bills, and it was the transfers uh, in kind. So as the result of the um, data analysis, uh, uh, it, it was revealed that both the family and the partner mostly helped the students with uh, cash and bank transfers. Uh, it's a fam for family um, party is 66% and for partner part it's uh, 65%. The next uh, position in the case of both supporting actors is uh, transfers in kind uh, and the family and the partner is uh, less likely to help the students to pay their bills and all this information are presented in the diagram as you can say so the uh, less likely is to uh, pay their bills uh, uh, mostly they gave the money to uh, students or they gave them, uh, them some um, free accommodation or food or clothes or phone or car use or, or different uh, subservices and uh, and not the paint uh, so uh, these bills as well. So um, family involvement uh, as a general trend is very high for students at each uh, level of uh, training. So at each educational levels, they are presented the two different uh, levels of data analysis: is uh, training level and Georgian citizenship. Um, a high rate is recorded. Uh, among the students of one stage uh, 
medical program, also the teacher's training integrated bachelor and master program. So support from a primary social group with both monetary and non-monetary assistance is common in the case of bachelor degree students, because as we already mentioned, um, the part, the main part of bachelor students and one stage medical uh, program students uh, they don't have this uh, paid jobs and uh, to say so they are unemployed um, uh, so uh, this also may be connected the um, issue that uh, the fact that among the members of these groups depending on their age and qualification uh, as I already mentioned the employment rate is relatively low so in addition, it was revealed that uh, um, that the non-citizens of Georgia compared to students who are the citizens of Georgia use family cash and bank transfers more. Such results can be caused by the fact that the uh, large part of uh, non-citizens of Georgia uh, are not employed. Uh, therefore, they don't uh, have a source of income here in Georgia. Uh, so uh, the family is considered to be the main source of support in this case as well. Um, so now um, I'm going to speak about the um, average amount of student expenses. Um, here are uh, presented the table, uh, the general table, and I want to pay your attention to the graphs uh, that are colored in green. Uh, so once, once again, uh, to sum up the position of family in financing the students uh, students um, situation is that the family involvement to this degree uh, should be associated with the specifics of the country um, because after reaching this um, 18 years the main part uh, of georgian students uh, continue to live in their parental houses and uh, often due to the lack of uh, paid job. So they are also um, financially dependent uh, on their families. Um, so maybe this uh, will be the, this may be the reason why it's often the representatives of the uh, primary social group, the family who provide the students with both monetary and non-monetary assistance. So in order to analyze the involvement of uh, supporting actors in this financial uh, support, of students, the amount of uh, average expenses uh, of the respondents were studied within this survey. So, uh, on the one hand, the expenses related to the studies were determined, and on the other hand, um, it was the living expenses. Uh, so, it should be taken also into account that uh, the, based on the possibility of uh, voluntarily giving an answer to this mentioned question, because it was uh, not mandatory question. Um, each cost was uh, determined by the different number of students. Uh, so all this information uh, we are indicated in the first uh, uh, column of our um, table, where it's written the number uh, number of answers. Um, so if the respondents indicated an inappropriate amount or uh, any of, in, an, in any of the columns, which was considered uh, somehow unrealistic at the stage of data processing. Um, based on the pre-developed criteria, this um, response um, has not been included in this calculation of total cost. So consequently, only um, 2,032 respondents had fully reported the total living cost. So uh, there are some, it, it was some note about the data processing and to go on the uh, describing and analyzing of these tables. Um, so as described, both uh, members of primary social group and the partner um, provide uh, monetary and non-monetary support to students. So considering this situation, uh, the expenses of the students were analyzed into two uh, categories. Uh, the first one was the amount paid by the students themselves uh, for uh, from their own pocket. And the second one was the amount paid by others. So the highest rate uh, of the average uh, monthly amount paid uh, by the respondents from their own pocket is presented in the category of living uh, expenses. Uh, it, it includes uh, uh, rents, uh, 
utility bills uh, and so on. So uh, this uh, uh, living expense is uh, equal to um, almost uh, uh, 430 lares. Uh, the expenses uh, paid by the someone else for this pur purpose are also uh, important because it seems that the living expenses uh, of the respondents uh, in the amount of uh, almost uh, 250 lares are provided by someone else. Um, so the next position is uh, held by the amount spent on the food. As you can see, uh, the students um, paid almost uh, um, 30, 300 lares from their own pocket, and uh, it's almost to 200 lares uh, that someone um, someone paid to, uh, directly uh, for a student. It should also be noted that the significant share of students' expenses is spent on child care, but the more important is um, the minimum amount was recorded in health care component. Uh, on average, uh, a student pays only uh, 30 lares uh, monthly from their own portrait, while others pay uh, 20 lares. In this respect, uh, we think that uh, uh, it's, it should be uh, underlined that uh, existing medical insurance services uh, should be taken into account. Uh, so on the one hand, uh, in Georgia, uh, there is the universal medical insurance. And uh, on the other hand, uh, student insurance uh, tailored to, uh, directly to this group. So maybe that's why students spend um, less uh, amount of money on the healthcare issues. Uh, so it's likely that the existence of uh, uh, these services has somehow a uh, positive impact of uh, respondents' uh, expenses on uh, healthcare costs. Um, also, it seems that uh, for other uh, regular living costs, which includes uh, clothes, uh, he, uh, tobacco, pets, insurance uh, and so on the students pay more uh, from their own pocket uh, and other helps them only with almost uh, uh, 60 lives in addition uh, to this living costs uh, um, as we already mentioned the research also analyzed the uh, study related expenses uh, it was revealed that that the amount paid by others in the category of uh, university fees is um, higher than the amount spent uh, spent from the students' pocket. Uh, so st students themselves uh, pay uh, 155 lives and uh, others pay it like more than uh, 300 lives. Uh, these results um, on the one hand may be determined by the um, amount of the students' grants also and on the other hand uh, uh, we think it should be emphasized once again that the um, assistance uh, provided by the primary social group has a, a significant share in the students uh, financial expenses uh, so to uh, sum up this uh, uh, exp average expenses uh, considering the students uh, total monthly expenditures the amount of living expenses um, exceeds the amounts of the study related expenses so in addition, also it sh should also be taken into account that the amount of money paid by others in the component of uh, study expenses um, exceeds the amount paid by the students from their own pocket. And uh, in the case of uh, living expenses, the uh, opposite results uh, is ob observed. Um, because as you can see, the students uh, uh, themselves pay um, 100, uh, 1,170 lares, while others help them with uh, only 705 lares. So uh, these tables describes the general information about the students' uh, average expenses, and uh, we wanted to uh, present uh, all these data by the Georgian citizenship. So um, firstly, as in the previous slide, I want to pay your attention on the green uh, graph. Uh, uh, but also I want to mention that um, the graphs which are colored uh, like in pink, uh, they are the data which uh, we are statistic statistically insignificant, but uh, we just uh, presented them. So uh, 
to, to start uh, analyzing this data by the citizenship of Georgia, the amount of expenses, uh, um, it turned out that the accommodation expenses paid from their own pocket by non-citizens of Georgia exceeded the amount spent by the Georgian citizens, as you can see, because um, in case of citizens of Georgia, it's uh, um, 400 lares, and in case of non-residents of Georgia, it's almost um, 600 lares. In this case, uh, it should uh, clearly be taken into account that non-Georgian students, uh, in most cases, uh, uh, live uh, on rent. Uh, so while Georgians, uh, as the study has also confirmed, mostly live um, in their own families and do not have to pay some additional uh, expenses Expenses in this regard. So I mean, uh, they did almost they didn't spend uh, money on their accommodation, on their food, and so on. So the uh, relatively high um, rate among Georgian students is uh, probably based on the experience of students from the regions, uh, as they like non-residents of Georgia students often have to rent uh, a living spaces. Uh, if we uh, uh, maybe we can maybe also talk about the university tuition, uh, university tuition fees also. Um, as for this tuition fees, students uh, who are not citizens uh, of Georgia pay uh, more than 200 laris monthly out of their own pocket. And in case of Georgian uh, citizens, this amount is uh, uh, reduced to almost 150 lives. Uh, in this regard, uh, we think it should be uh, taken into account that non-citizens of Georgia, um, for the most part, uh, do not uh, ben somehow benefit from the local state uh, programs and therefore have to cover uh, the cost of education themselves. So considering this and uh, also other expenses, the total study related uh, expenses paid out of uh, students own pockets equals uh, uh, more than 200 uh, lives for citizens of Georgia uh, per month, while the expenses of uh, non-citizens of Georgia uh, increases to uh, more than 300 uh, lives. So um, the next uh, uh, issues uh, that we want to cover uh, within the um, financial conditions of students is savings. Uh, so it's the study found that uh, the majority of uh, respondents do not finance uh, the living or study costs fully or partially through their savings. Um, consequently, one a third of students have a positive experience uh, uh, through savings from this previous job, and it's uh, more than uh, 20 percent, uh, and uh, through other savings, it's more than 10 percent. Um, also, it should be noted that uh, uh, when we analyze this data by the citizenship of uh, Georgia, it revealed that uh, more than one fifth of Georgian citizens uh, cover uh, these costs uh, through the savings pro from previous job. Uh, more than a quarter of non-Georgian students uh, use other type of, types of savings because, as we already mentioned, uh, it's uh, uh, less actual uh, for non-Georgian students to have this um, paid jobs. Um, and also, uh, we want to talk about the monthly incomes of students, average incomes, it's the general uh, general data. Um, of the answers given, the highest average rate was recorded in two dominant categories. Uh, one is the net income from paid job during the current lecture period, in the, and it's 250 lares. Uh, and the second one is the cash or transfer uh, to the bank account from parental families, and it's almost to uh, 100 lares. Accordingly to this uh, amount indicated in each uh, source uh, of income, as a result of the data processing, the student's average monthly income equals uh, more than 700 lares. Um, and as we talk about the um, expenses, we want to talk about the educational level of when you're analyzing the monthly incomes. Here you can see that this data once again uh, confirms that the dominant source of students' income is uh, on the on the one hand the primary social group, I mean the family, and the on the other hand uh, the paid job. So 
the largest amount of uh, financial support received from the family is given to the students uh, of the one stage medical programs, uh, uh, which amounts to more than 300 lares. And as for the average monthly incomes received from a paid job, uh, according to, to the assessment of bachelor's students, the amount is equal to more than uh, 200 uh, lares. And in this case of master's students, it increases to more than 600 lares. Um, so it's uh, once again underlines the situation that the master's uh, degree uh, program students are. Uh, uh, the more part of them uh, have these paid jobs compared to the um, bachelor's uh, degree programs. And also um, underline, the, uh, underline that the, the le least uh, um, number of from the net income from paid job uh, is revealed uh, by the level of one stage medical program. And uh, once again, uh, it's because uh, they are... Uh, job is actually connected with their study programs as well. Um, and here is uh, some differences between the Georgian citizenship, uh, between the Georgian students and non-residents of Georgian students. Um, as it turned out, among uh, non-Georgian citizens of uh, non-citizens of Georgian students, the amount of financial support received from primary social groups uh, uh, compared to Georgian students is almost uh, double, uh, considering that uh, non-Georgian students rarely benefit from Georgian state assistance or local paid jobs, so their main financial supporter is their families. In addition, it should be also noted that among students who are not uh, Georgian citizens, uh, compared to Georgians, the amount of assistance received from other countries uh, is large. Uh, so uh, we can uh, also uh, speak about the financial difficulties to somehow sum up all this information. Um, so when we uh, when analyzing these students' financial situations after determining the relationship between these incomes and expenses, the respondents also assessed to what extent they are currently worried about these financial difficulties. So as it turned out, almost a third of the students, it's 31%, uh, took a natural position, it's the point three. And financial problems are present for 43% uh, um, of this respondent, and it's uh, points uh, one and two. So when we analyze this uh, information in respect to uh, of the type of educational level, uh, it's revealed that these financial problems are currently um, the greatest concern of master students. Uh, and the same position is held by a relatively small number of students of one stage medical program and teachers training integrated bachelor master program. So accordingly, um, almost a third of the students uh, of the same level are not currently experiences some financial difficulties. And additionally, we can speak about the differences between the um, women uh, women and the men. Additionally, so this as a result of analyzing the issue by the uh, sex, it was revealed that currently women are experiencing financial problems more than men. It's 46% compared to um, 40%. And uh, so to uh, sum up our information that we presented to you, um, uh, we just want to um, underline the, uh, once again, underline the uh, involvement of uh, family members and involvement of primary source, uh, primary social groups in financing the students. Uh, living uh, living uh, costs and study related costs, it revealed that the family is the primary social group that is the dominant support for students, both in terms of living and study related costs. As the study shows, uh, people who are non, not citizens of Georgia receive more financial support from their native families because um, they are they mostly um, don't have paid job here. And also they mostly uh, do not have some benefits from government and uh, some um, local authorities as well. The, um, also the active involvement of students' family members is uh, also due to the fact that the majority students uh, are not uh, employed. 
And uh, uh, also to conclude, uh, there are many cases when the function of the paid job uh, is only to obtain uh, like additional income and it's uh, less uh, related to the um, improvement of skills to to the development of uh, uh, students' uh, professional situation, especially if the students uh, does not work in their own or a related profession. As, and as uh, we already mentioned, uh, there are uh, less cases uh, when they have the opportunity to uh, to work with their professions. Uh, so that uh, that was the main uh, topics which we wanted to uh, present to you um, about about the students' uh, employment uh, experiences and about the students' uh, financial situation in general in Georgia. So uh, we are very pleased to hear your uh, feedbacks and questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Anna, for your very interesting presentation. I think it was really good insight into uh, Georgian, Georgian students' um, employment and financial condition. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the audience? either type into the chat or just raise hand and let us know. It's very welcome. Anything you would like to ask? Elizabeth, the raised hand, please. please. Hello, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. So um, my question is, uh, uh, among those that are not citizens of Georgia, are there any uh, countries that are the majority or is there uh, about equal from, from different countries or what countries are they from? Thank you for this uh, question. There were uh, different uh, countries presented, but um, I can uh, uh, check exactly what was the majority uh, of these uh, students because uh, the data, uh, the level of data analysis, we just uh, uh, compared two different groups and it was the uh, uh, Georgian and uh, non-Georgians to say so. Um, and uh, just uh, one minute, okay, and I will uh, check the major uh, countries of non-Georgian uh, non-Georgian uh, students. So the uh, 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 the vast majority of respondents were born in Georgia. So among other countries, those born in India uh, prevail uh, because uh, we have this uh, medical uh, medical in, in, institute and uh, mostly the Indian students are uh, studying there, so uh, only a small share of students were born in Russia, and also there was uh, almost two percent of students uh, in our study from Azerbaijani, uh, and I think uh, that was the three uh, main countries uh, uh, from uh, from which countries we are presented students in our study. So the in the first position it was India because there are. Um, many students uh, studying here in Georgia, uh, especially on um, medical uh, programs and healthcare um, programs. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for questions. Any other questions from our listeners? Meanwhile, you are coming up with your questions. I actually wanted to ask something that uh, uh, we saw that there are actually quite uh, many students who are unemployed, at least most of the time during their studies. Can you tell us about the trend in students' employment rate in Georgia and how has the pandemic, for example, affected it? Was it like as high before as well or has it declined, increased? Uh, okay, so... Uh... As you already mentioned, as and as I already mentioned, that uh, students uh, mostly are employed during during this current semester, while some are working from time to time. So beyond that, um, based on the results of this research, it can be said that the mostly their work um, is not uh, content related to their curriculum. So uh, this is uh, evidenced by the actual results in the country as well. The um, when we're talking about the trends of 
employment of students, um, we can say that the majority of them, uh, especially at the undergraduate level, <clears throat> sorry, uh, are employed in the service sectors in Georgia, um, mainly some in supermarkets as support staff. Uh, sorry. Um, so the mentioned uh, field is uh, all, almost easily accessible for students uh, because they do not uh, require any experience and so they do not do not require any professional knowledge, especially um, at the subject and professional level. So in general, uh, if we talk about the pandemic uh, situation, pandemic issues, um, the pandemic had a great negative impact on employment uh, in Georgia and especially for students. Uh, we can we have some and if we talk about uh, the study related issues also in the context of pandemic, we can say that um, in case of uh, regional universities and in case of students from region, uh, for them. Um, the situation uh, connected with the transportation uh, connected some study related costs maybe did not seem so negative because the, they um, uh, did not have to uh, pass some um, to change some location to uh, gain this knowledge but if we talk about the um, students who live in Tbilisi and if we talk about the um, remote uh, format of uh, studying we can say that the expenses of students may be somehow increased in case of uh, um, fa facility related issues because they had to uh, buy all these um, tablets or laptops or online courses of uh, their study programs and uh, in general the pandemic has uh, so the negative impact for sure uh, for students uh, especially because um, most of them uh, lost their uh, jobs uh if if they uh have somehow self-employed or they worked in private sectors as well uh, because there were no guarantees uh, how to continue working in this case so um to to say so the pandemic has very uh, negative impact of students employment rights uh, as well in general and in, in student cases uh, on both levels Mm -hmm. I see. I think it's very similar in all countries to Baton because students often have uh, these jobs in the service sector and so on that was most likely to to be quit during the pandemic. But Mihaela has a question as well. So please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have maybe one general question because, to be honest, I don't know much about uh, a Georgian higher education system and I'm curious uh, how open is this system? It means, uh, for example, how big proportion of students after they uh, they finished uh, their high school, they continue to uh, to university or to college. Uh, is it allied only part of student or almost all of those who are qualified for uh, for the study? And uh, the second question, do, do you have different uh, or did, did you analyze different uh, uh, modes of study i mean present study and part-time study if there are differences in of course there should be some differences in uh, work experience and uh, incomes and ex uh, and expenses so that's these are two of my questions thank you uh, uh Anuk, may i may i answer yes. to to these questions thank, okay. thank you michaela so i'm yako kachikachishvili i'm head of the institution which conducted the study. I'm a professor of sociology at Tbilisi State University, you know, head of the department there. Yeah, concerning your question, I will start from the last question. We don't have a full-time and part-time uh, study practice for students. You know, our students, they are obliged to uh, study only full-time. We don't have a part-time study system or part-time study practice. So this is obvious. So students, they cannot apply for part-time study in our universities. This is the first question. And uh, this is a uh, you know, answer on your second question. And concerning the first question, so still, and it is kind of a heritage of, um, uh, of uh, the Soviet Union experience, I would say the 
value of obtaining higher education is, uh, you know, amongst the highest values of uh, Georgian society. So here, people are keen to, um, to, you know, get higher education and to get diploma from higher education institutions. It's still very popular to become a student and to become um, a person with higher education. So um, the, um, the majority, I, I, I don't have exact number and exact percentage, but the majority of uh, young uh, people um, graduating from high school, they apply for higher education institutions. And uh, uh, parallel to this, I have to mention that um, professional education is still quite unpopular in our country. That's why we uh, don't have qualified craftsmen in our country. And in order to find a good, I don't know, someone who can build to uh, who make a renovation in the apartment, you have to <laughs> wait for months for a qualified worker. So, I mean, Yes, this is a very sad thing that uh, uh, professional education is somehow dehumanized in our country. Um, and in addition, uh, we don't uh, have a well developed uh, professional education system. So we, we um, don't have, um, the, you know, uh, a, a uh, competitive curricula in this domain of education. We don't have um, a well-developed infrastructure. We don't have, uh, um, yeah, a premises for professional education. Though the uh, job market uh, demands uh, uh, a, a high quality uh, uh, people, um, uh, for different jobs. That's why, you know, the business in Georgia has to hire, um, not Georgians, but uh, people coming from abroad, you know, people coming from Eastern Europe, people coming from um, Asia, from Turkey. Um, and um, you find uh, more or less and less Georgians, uh, qualified Georgians working um, professionally. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a very sad reality, but this is still a, a trend uh, that professional education is somehow declined compared to higher education. Thank you, Michaela, for your question. And also thanks to Iago for an answer. Are there any other comments or questions? I think we should wrap it up soon, but actually I was wondering about one fact as well. Uh, it was mentioned in the presentation that um, almost a third of, uh, of the students are working uh, at the job, which is not connected to their profession or their field of study. But do you know how is it after they graduate? Do they then get the, the job that is connected to their profession or is still difficult to achieve that? Yeah, it's still difficult to find a job which fits to their qualification, but um, it has to be mentioned that it depends on 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 the professions. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the specialties, let's say, like this. For example, uh, people coming from engineering, they can find the job relevant to their professions, but people come coming from humanities, especially from philosophy, for example, or from, you know, philology or, you know, this kind of, um, even from social sciences, the sciences, from political sciences, for example, or from sociology. You know, it's difficult for them to find the relevant job. So this is true. And uh, sadly, many of my students, of our students, for example, sociologists, they work in banks, you know, they work in... Uh, I don't know, financial institutions not having any relation to their uh, qualifications. So we, we, I mean, it's a, the, the employment rate, unemployment rate in Georgia is very high. So officially it is only 
19% according to the state statistics, uh, but uh, in fact, in reality, it is much higher. So it is up to up to 40 percent and it is proven by 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 the studies by the surveys done uh, both local and international organizations so this is really an issue a burning issue for for games you know unemployment yeah thank you anna for your presentation also thanks to iago for answering some of the questions and commenting as well uh it was really interesting insight to the situation of Georgian students. Thanks a lot. Also, thanks to all our listeners. Uh, I hope that next time we will meet in mid-February around that time. And definitely stay tuned about the upcoming webinars because more and more countries will be ready with their national reports of Eurostudent date. And this means that soon we will have some more sneak peeks, hopefully, to different countries' findings. Thank you very much. Have a Thank nice day. You. Thank you. Have a nice day, you too. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.